And if anyone has any questions, please uh, defer all your questions to me. I wore some atomic swag today, but I want to kick things off today with a couple of questions for, for you to get you stimulated around on what we're building here at Atomic with our payroll APIs. So I'm gonna ask you just very quickly, who pays you? And I'm gonna see if anybody's got any, you know, kind of clever answers to this question. Cause we, we, had, we put this in front of hundreds of thousands of people on a monthly basis that run through Atomic's flow by any one of our, our partners, largely in the FinTech space. If anyone is brave enough. Okay, Gosto, thank you, Zach. People get paid in this industry. <laughs> Very clever. But so if you were like Zach and you answered, or Sophia or Bill that actually answered a payroll provider, you'd be about roughly aligned with 20% of Atomic's traffic on a monthly basis of those consumers that are able to identify who the, their payroll provider is when we ask them who pays you. Now, the ability to answer this question helps us better map that person back to their payroll provider and get them access to ultimately be able to you know, do things with their direct deposit, such as update the destination bank account, make changes to where they want to send all or partial uh, components of their paycheck, as well as access the data behind it, including for verification of employment and verification of income purposes. I'm going to hand it over to Jeff, who's going to lead our technical demo and man the chat, but happy to talk through some of the stats and any questions you guys have. It's all good. It wouldn't be a live down. There, there would be no fun if these things didn't happen. So this is, this is there we go. That's really right. yeah. now it all makes sense. Yeah. Now it all makes sense. So along with that, right? So we basically have built a standard SDK. All of our API documentation is tied here. Um, you can run and see it within uh, Postman. We are um, we are currently the modal actually interoperates either with a website and or many of the partners we're working with today have built out the modal within um, within their own app. And so we are supporting today. I think uh, Android and iOS development um, across like Kotlin, Swift, uh, React Native, and Flutter as well. Um, the products we have, which I'll get into the demo here in a second, is basically the ability to switch direct deposits in full or partial, uh, the ability to verify user's income and or employment status. Um, and then we've got several different kind of outputs of those data sets that sit within a variety of, of payroll systems for you to access these specific data points within our partners apps. So like with um, with a challenger bank, Neobank, or some of the online uh, the, um, uh, payday lending folks, personal lending folks as well. So those are the main kind of use cases of how people use our system today. Um, and we basically then obviously as, as some of the other demos have showed, we're allowing access into our sandbox environment for people to build out the experience. And so, this is our emulator within the sandbox environment. Most uh, teams we've worked with are able to get our standard um, SDK up and running with probably about a four hours worth of development time. So we've seen people be up and running with our standard SDK within uh, 24 hours. Uh, we've seen other people you know, that deep link and customize into the SDK um, and take like a week or two because they're building out what the user experience um, needs to look like within that, right? And so you can basically build an API call uh, by running our deposit verify or identify solution. I'm gonna do deposit uh, for this example right here. So you'd initiate an, an API call into the SDK and launch our transact, which would then basically launch our uh, SDK within your app and or web application. We're pretty clear about are we either helping you with switching direct deposit or are we actually accessing data? So we're either, we're either writing into the system or reading in the system. A uh, couple other items there. When you would have initiated the uh, API call and put in deposit, um, you would have actually passed us uh, a unique GUID for each individual user that comes into the system. Uh, so we can identify that transaction and you can identify which webhooks are appropriate to it. Uh, additionally, for direct deposit switching, um, you would have passed through the new account and routing number uh, that we actually want to write into the payroll system um, as we move forward here. Um, from here, the consumer gets the option to start to select by their employer and or their payroll provider. Uh, that's why Lindsay kind of pointed out that uh, about 20% of the users we're working with um, are identifying themselves by their payroll system that they use, not just by their employers. 
Um, I'm going to switch to the live system here on the fly real quick, just to show you some of the unique things that we've been able to build out for user experience. If you're talking to us or anybody in the aggregated payroll API space today, one of the conversations you're having or want to be having is around coverage and conversion. This is a much harder space to cover than say like what we were doing when I was at Quovo and Plaid in terms of knowing who all the banks are and building out the connectivity because there's a mapping exercise that occurs between the popular or the employers in general and the payroll systems um, and maintaining that connectivity given that these employers switch payroll systems sometimes uh, kind of once a year or just depends on which one they're using, right? And so there's uh, an update to that, right? And so, um, and then there's unique things that happen within each of these payroll systems that are dev team and support team has built out, right? So like with Augusto, uh, we're actually supporting the ability to OAuth uh, using your Google account, right? And so if you didn't do this, there'd be a whole crew of people that wouldn't be able to actually transact and uh, authenticate through the system. With like a Home Depot, uh, we're working with partners of ours where we actually are starting to expose the ability for a consumer to basically specify a specific amount they want to move from a direct deposit perspective. So not only doing a full uh, direct deposit switch over, uh, but also the ability to put in, you know, a partial direct deposit switch uh, and switch that over from here. So we're seeing this uptake a lot with like investment type apps and accounts that we're working with as well here. Um, as far as, um, logging into the system, right? We've done some unique things here that have helped the conversion rate uh, from a dev perspective. We've reverse engineered the ability for a user um, to reset their username and password on the fly within the mobile. Um, and it's increased our conversion rate pretty high. So we're seeing a right around a 70% conversion rate come through um, on this authentication screen. Um, so, and then we also have built out the ability to, to support two-factor authentication. Yeah, sorry. So the system actually um, is identifying if there's two-factor authentication as you go through the flow. Uh, in this test case here, I'm actually running it through with two-factor. We're seeing two-factor authentication probably about 20% of the time when people log in. In addition to the ability to connect one time to the account, um, in our API documentation, you'll see something called linked accounts, which allows for the ability uh, for us to store the credentials. And so you can hit the account uh, on a periodic basis, could be three times a month, four times a month, where people want to basically verify that the individual has maintained their account and routing number in the system, or they want to verify that the individual is still employed there. So that's our generic uh, kind of straightforward demo. 